ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮು ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ನೀಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಥಿ ಓಡ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಗನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟೋಡ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜೆ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ನಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫೈಡ್ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಇನ್ ದ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾಪತ್ರಿ ಆಸ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಡಿಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ there is many many different different kinds of virtues in devotee's life or any spiritual aspirant's life which can help the devotee to earn the rajipo of god or his ekantik satpurush or sant or any devotees one this vairagya is one of them and not doubt we do not have the total absence in our life regarding or with the any worldly things or worldly objects but as a devotee as a saint of bhagwan swami narayan we all have little or more amount of vairagya in our life sometimes a devotee of god renounce the outside food as part of the command of bhagwan swami narayan that is also called his vairagya why because the other worldly persons they are enjoying the outside food on the other hand the duty of god is not eating outside food and that is why that is called a vairagya for that duty this is just for an example in the same way in many many different things in our life if we observe deeply then we will find uh, some amount of vairagya in our behavior but when we attain the 100 person meaning total absence for the attachment of any worldly objects or things or person in our life then maharaj will become pleased upon us and he understand we have attained the 100 person vairagya but in the vachanamrut 74th of gurudev first chapter sri ji maharaj say the extent of one's vairagya and one's understanding can be measured only when one encounters vices or in times of some hardship but not otherwise so no doubt we have a detachment or we can say the vairagya in your life even though or maybe a small or little amount but we have vairagya but how we can measure it that is the question and sri ji maharaj said that when hardship we fall upon us then at that time our vairagya and our understanding can be measured otherwise without any hardship one cannot measure anyone's understanding or vairagya we as our uh, we are uh, living our normal life and in our normal life we have uh, we, we can easily follow the rules and regulations given by bhagwan swami narayan or given by pujya guru ji or santo that's not problem we are easily follow them but when some kind of situation happen in our life some adverse condition happen to us at the time if we follow strictly the rules given to us by bhagwan or sant then that is called our true vairagya otherwise what happen when someone become not serious but a little ill or feeling something wrong in his body and at the time because of that minor illness if one cannot follow the rules of bhagwan then that is not called a proper vairagya but even though one is sick and still follow 
the rules given by Bhagwan or son that is called true Vairag. In the same way, this is a very small uh, amount of Vairag or we can say the very easy example to understand the term of Vairagya. Now, in real life story, how we can understand that we have a detachment, we have not attached ourselves with the worldly things, we do not have the any kind of worldly attachment. How we can understand that? How we can measure our Vairagya? If we want to taste our Vairagya, if we want to taste our detachment with the worldly things and objects or our relatives, then let me see one of example. Once upon a time, Bhagwan Swaminar was staying in Bhuj. There, Maharaj was giving discourses regarding different different topics of our spirituality to the devotees and santo. At that time, once Bhagwan Swaminar himself wrote a letter to different different village kings, and the letter commanding different names of the, of his duties like Maja Khachar, Sura Khachar, Somla Khachar, Alaya Khachar and many other duties name it is written in this in, in that letter and at the time Maharaj sent that letter with a Brahmin to these duties villages and it is written in the letter that if you are taking your meal leave it if you are busy doing some important work, quit it and start immediately from wherever you are and in whatever condition you may be. If you fo want to follow my command, then please renounce everything and come here in Bhuj after becoming a sadhu with Ramdas Swami in Jaitalpur. This is only the commands written in the letter and in the beginning it was written the devotee's name to whom the letter was written and that letter if suppose we are thinking for our own self instead of the name uh, written in the letter if suppose Sriji Maharaj or our Ekantik Sadhpurus like Puja Guruji if they give command to us either by either in written form or in oral form meaning either he gave a letter uh, giving a command by writing on a letter or giving his command to renounce everything beside and become a renunciant merely on the phone then just think am I become ready to follow his command or not think this question if we even ready to become a son meaning even renouncing everything besides and follow the instruction given by the Satpurus then that is called a true Vairag so here <coughs> in the time of Sriji Maharaj these devotees were even though they were the village chieftains still they have the same kind of detachment like that of the Santo because Santo they have renounced everything besides and they become a Sant but even though they are these devotees are living in the society meaning they are living with their families and they, they were the village chieftains still they have the same amount of Vairagi in their mind in their heart and because of that whoever listen the message from Sriji Maharaj immediately they postpone everything and they renounce their village, their businesses, their everything besides their family, everything and they just walk towards the Buj, towards the Jaitalpur. That was their extreme level of Vairagya or their level of understanding. And in the same way, the another incident happened at that same time. There was a devotee who was engaging himself in marriage life. 
so there was a marriage ceremony that was going on and at the same time his maternal uncle who was the organizer of that um, marriage ceremony and who was the main person for that ceremony and that was aja patel of the village methan so there sri ji maharaj also written his name in the letter so the messenger came there and so the letter to aja patel then aja patel read it and at the time he was organizing the marriage ceremony for kalyandas of kadu meaning his uh, one of his nephew or we can say his relative then at that time he was thinking for a while and at, at the time even from the marriage ceremony kalyandas he came out from the stage and uh, where ajay patel was reading the, reading the letter there he also asked him what's the situation what happened is there any problem then ajay patel saw the letter to him and kalyandas also read the letter and he said let's go why are you thinking for that then ajapatil he said you should not come you have to complete you have to complete and remain in your house or life because this is your marriage ceremony and uh, more importantly sri ji maharaj had not written your name in this letter then ajapatil said uh, then kalyandas said no mama my name is also written in the letter it is written after your names after the other devotee's name etc and that etc meaning whoever desire to renounce or whoever read the letter whoever get the message everyone included in the word etc and that's why it is my name was also written in the letter so please let me come with you so this is what after renouncing after becoming a saint the all the group of 18 devotees and this 19 a new person meaning without one whose name was not written in the letter kalyandas these all 19 people they were coming towards bhuj and sri ji maharaj was there maharaj become extremely pleased upon all of these devotees why because with a single letter they have renounced everything besides and they all become a devotee of bhagwan uh, they all become a saint of bhagwan swami narayan and for the sake of bhagwan swami narayan for the following his command they have renounced everything without thinking for anything now when sri ji maharaj ask this ajab uh, kalyandas and ajabtel why they came then kalyandas ask uh, kalyandas said to maharaj maharaj please you have written my name in the word of etc so please accept me as your saint and sri ji maharaj gave him a sadhu diksha meaning initiation and said you have done what nobody else can do because he was in rena- he had renounced his family his relatives his farm his property his house everything and that was he had renounced everything at the time of his marriage so half a ceremony was completed and he had renounced everything and he became a saint so sri ji maharaj said you have done what nobody else can do and therefore your name shall be adbhut anand swami so let we see something about adbhut anand swami's life the life of adbhut anand swami was indeed great he was born in a village called kadu near lakhtar in the surendranagar district sri ji maharaj and sri ji maharaj and his sadhu sanctified the lake situated on the banks of this uh, on the outskirts of the village by frequently bathing in it so this village of kadu was sanctified by sri ji maharaj and the non santo adbhutanan swam meaning kalyandas his previous name kalyandas Uh, his father was sanga patel and his mother was called devbai in vikram sath 1852 when ramanand swami celebrated the ankut festival in manchakhachar's house in karyani 
then at the time kalyandas and his uncle aja patel had gone there and were initiated into the satsang for by ramanand swami meaning in 1852 they become a devotee of god but at the time bhagwan swami was not as bhagwan swami meaning he was traveling in different different part of the country in the form of nilkantharni so at the time they met ramanand swami and they become a satsangi of ramanand swami and they follow his instructions after the return of ramanand swami to aksardham kalyandas had his first darshan of sri ji maharaj at mangrol and at the time kalyandas was greatly influenced by his maternal uncle ajapatel of village methan and kalyandas developed a firm firm dedication towards the satsang from his uncle but his father was not a satsangi and his mother devbai had some interest in satsang because she had a satsang from her parents and that's why devbai had some interest in satsang and she used to sing devotional songs but this was never appreciated by sangha patel devbai had suffered a lot throughout her life on account of her husband's ill temper even then she had taken great pains to infuse devotional favor in her sons so even though devbai did not have the good situation in his in in her home in her family still she provided her son meaning kalyandas with the satsang culture or we can say the satsang rules and regulations and good habits and sangapatel was socially well placed and was very happy as kalyandas came to age his marriage was organized at the village methan when the ceremonies were going on under the guidance of ajapatel he received an urgent letter from maharaj which i have narrated in the beginning the messenger brought a letter commanding macha sura somla alaya mulu naja matra mamaya aja jiva virdas lada kala kamalsi etc to immediately leave their work in the field or town if you are taking your meals leave it if you are busy doing some important work quit it and start immediately from wherever you are and in whatever condition you may be this is my sincere desire this is what sri ji maharaj had written in the letter as soon as ajay patel read the con- uh, read the letter he decided to honor sri ji maharaj's command meaning ajay patel was such a firm duty of bhagwan swami and that he had already uh, even though he was in a family life even though he was in a household fam- household life still he had renounced everything by his mind so he was doing all kind of activity with the family members or with the family or for the family everything that's only as part of his duty but with his heart he was totally renounced and that is why he was thinking to honor sri ji maharaj's command and he decided in his mind to renounce but he had a question of the marriage ceremony because everything depend everything depending upon him he was the main person behind this organization behind this event and that is why he was thinking that when kalyandas came to know about maharaj message he asked for the letter and read it again and again so merely by reading the letter kalyandas even though his name was not written in the letter still he had read the letter two three times and he had he was thinking at the time that even though my name was not written in this letter but it is sri ji maharaj's desire to renounce the worldly life for the devotees and this time he is become pleased if i renounce and this is this is only chance i have to serve bhagwan swaminarayan otherwise this human life even i have attained 
many times previously but still in in no any times i have served maharaj and this is a good time for me so when kalendas came to know about maharaj message and he asked for the letter and read it again and again he too decided to renounce but ajay patel asked him where is your name in the letter then kalendas immediately replied the word etc includes me too and ajay patel could not dissuade his nephew all his relations and in in laws try their best and request kalendas not to spoil such an auspicious ceremony but kalendas would not kalendas would not remain there without seeking anybody's permission he accompanied his maternal uncle and left for jatalpur to see ramdas swami and from there they departed for buj as desired by sri ji maharaj Sri Ji Maharaj accorded a grand reception to the newly initiated Brahmanas and Embras, each one of them with great affection. He paid compliments to each one of them. Then he turned to Kalyandas and inquired, "Why has he come? Had I mentioned Kalyandas' name in my letter?" Then Kalyandas politely replied, "Oh Maharaj, you had written that." you have written the devotee's name and at last you have written etc so i will be much pleased by your action by your later and i was thinking in my mind that you desire to make a household duty into saintlyhood meaning you desire to renounce this world this worldly activities or the family relations and that is why even though you did not mention my name still i have renounced because that is what i understand your deep desire for everyone maharaj will become pleased by listening kalyandas answer and and maharaj quickly read his mind and uh call him to sit by his side he removed the wedding ties from his wrist gave him sadhu diksha meaning initiation and said you have done what nobody else can do and therefore your name shall be adbhutan swami now what the many many different different incident happened to adbhutan swami's life will continue later but the interesting and more important things is that adbhutanand sai was busy meaning he was doing his own marriage ceremony and half a ceremony was over and still he decided to renounce worldly life family life and sri ji maharaj in the vachana would say the vairagya and the understanding one possesses is measured only when one have to face the adverse circumstances or any kind of hardships in this case kalyandas did not have any kind of hardship or not any adverse circumstances but he was engaging in worldly life he was just beginning he he, he just engage himself to join in family life and at the time sri ji maharaj later even though it is not mentioned his name still he understood the sri ji maharaj desire and he had renounced his life that is was his that is was the pinnacle of vairagya his or his understanding even today we have many many such kind of incident uh, we knew about and we have seen or we have uh, listened many times the incident of our puja guru ji there were many devotees were going every day to the swami narayan mandir surat and at the time our puja dada guru ji he was the spiritual or the head of the surat mandir and at the time everyone was impressed by dada guru ji's most and extremely compassionate and caring nature and due to that all the devotees also loved too much 
to Dada Guruji and at that time one day amongst the many devotees that went to meet Swami there was an idol Bhagat by the name of Devsi Bhagat he also went to do darshan of Swami meaning Bujya Dada Guruji there Devsi Bhagat had come to the Surat Mandir with his brother Vinu and surprisingly out of nowhere Devsi Bhagat pleaded Dada Guruji to accept Vinu for his seva so this is what uh, many times we have seen even today that many devotees come with their uh, with uh, any kids with them and at the time even though the kid was not understanding anything still they requested Santo or Puja Guruji that please accept this either my son or my nephew or whoever relation doesn't matter but the devotee many times requested Puja Guruji or Santo please accept him or please keep him in your service or with you because he was doing too much dhamal masti in house and that's why please keep him with you so they are not like uh, they are not requesting seriously they are just joking or they are just uh, giving some lesson to that kid not for any serious matter and in the same way Devsi Bhagat also requested Bujya Dada Guruji please accept this Vinu for your seva However, due to his young age, Dada and Dada Guruji saw the young age of Vinu Bhagat, and that's why Dada Guruji did not express any sort of approval. And Dada Guruji also understand uh, understood the uh, nature of the household devotees, and that's why he did not give any kind of reply. But the next day also, Devsi Bhagat pleaded for the same. Then at that time, Dada Guruji looked in Vinu Bhagat's eyes and asked him, Do you want to become a sadhu? Because Vinu Bhagat was too young to understand what is the life of saint or what is renouncing or what is sadhu. He, no one can understand in such a little age. So at that time, Puja Dada Guruji asked him lovingly, Do you want to become a sadhu? Then Vinu Bhagat replied, Yes, Swami. Then Dada Guruji asked him whether he had asked anyone that he can become a sadhu or not. Then immediately Vinu Bhagat replied with, uh, in his like childlike voice that I did not have, uh, I, I did not ask anyone to become a sadhu. Then Dada Guruji told him to go and ask Ghansyam Maharaj in the mandir. If Gansya Maharaj would give you permit to become a sadhu, then I'll make you sadhu. So Pujya Dada Guruji was also, if suppose we are thinking for this worldly matter, worldly thing, wor wor worldly way to communicate with the kid in the same way, if we just guess in our mind, imagine in our mind that uh, how was the situation at the time. Just as today, if suppose very little kid come to our mandir and any of our santo ask him, you want to become a sadhu? Then that kid sometimes, even though he not understand anything about the sadhu, still sometimes he say yes, sometimes he said no. And in the same way, Dada Guruji asked Vinu Bhagat, you want to become a sadhu? And Vinu Bhagat said, uh, yes, I want to become a sadhu. Then Dada Guruji actually did not want to make such a uh, such a young kid to sadhu because he also understood the age of person to become a sadhu or when one understand completely the family or relations or worldly things then at the time if suppose someone renounce everything then that's good and fine and that's why he asked him to go and ask Gansya Maharaj if Gansya Maharaj will, go, will give you permit to become a sadhu, then I will make you a sadhu. So with this condition, he also do the same thing, just as for Kalyandas of Kadu, he had the situation that he was in the worldly life, he was just near to engage in worldly life, and at the time, Sriji Maharaj read a letter, not addressing to him, but the other devotees, and he just read the letter and he decided to become a saint in the same way 
Vinu Bhagat he had also decided to become a saint. Why? Because a saint like Dada Guruji, he had asked him, you want to become a saint? So something in his question. And understanding this, Vinu Bhagat replied him, yes, I want to become a saint. And after that we know the story, Vinu Bhagat showed the true determination and daily he would do 108 downwards to Gansyam Maharaj and uh, he also performed uh, Mala while standing on one leg and raising both of his hands in the air. So while in this process this young child would uh, pleaded to Gansyam Maharaj, please give me th the permission to become a son. And in this way one year passed and Gansyam Maharaj himself came out of the Murti of Gansyam Maharaj in the Surat Mandir and after coming out of the shrine he himself gave darshan to Puja Guruji meaning Vinu Bhagat and he blessed him and gave permission while tapping on his one of cheeks and his Bhagwan himself said go and become a son so this is what the story that even though he had a tough, tough situation hardship in his life meaning hardship in the form of getting a permission of Bhagwan himself and still he got it and he become a son so this is what the pinnacle of detachment or vairagya in Puja Guruji's life and how he become a saint so this is what the story of Adbhutanam Swami it is still remain we will continue it in next Sunday Sri Ganshyam Maharaj Nijay Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvade Veshwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Kar Swami Narayanam Nilakandham Bhaji Sri Ganshyam Maharaj Nijay